Hey, it's Anthony. Welcome to the Anthony Conklin Podcast, where we help entrepreneurs connect their passion, purpose, and why. If you're struggling with sales strategy and confidence, let's definitely have a conversation. You know, I always try to find entrepreneurs that are making moves in the industry, not just for the sake of making moves and, and jumping on the latest trends, but people have actually demonstrated that they're helping people, making an impact, but also making money. You know, I, I, I meet people all the time and I've came across somebody who I've, I've grown to admire in a weird way. He's probably the most controversial person I've met in recent years, but he's probably making the most impact. And he's making an impact on a platform called Clubhouse. He's a serial entrepreneur. He runs 50, 60 companies. JT, there's so much controversy going around you, but there's so many good things going around you. Tell me what is going on in your world and how are you helping entrepreneurs connect their passion, purpose, and why? Well, here's the thing, controversy, like what is the controversy? The fact that I don't fluff things around, that I'm a no BS, I tell it how it is. We live in a society where everyone gets a trophy for participation and everybody's a winner. And not everyone's a winner in business. 97% of businesses don't make it. And I think we become a society where people are afraid. They're afraid of being canceled. And what happens is we're lying and we're enabling people. Entrepreneurism is the best in the world. But it's also hard. Life is hard. There's unknown. There's adversity. Like, I think people have glamorized entrepreneurship with the Lambos mm -hmm. and the cars. And I think what happens is that we're enabling people that, yeah, you'd be a laptop millionaire, make, you know, 10 grand a day. Like, the claims are getting more and more wild. And it's not. There, there is no such thing as get rich quick. You can Wait, get what, what, very what, what, What's the biggest misconception? I mean, there's a misconception. I asked Tony Robbins a, you know, a couple of years ago, what's the biggest misconception about being, you know, the, the world's, you know, greatest, you know, motivational speaker and financial advisor? What's the biggest misconception people have about being an entrepreneur today? I think that it's easy that they're just going to start something and they're going to make money, that they're not going to go through the pain. Like it's all going to be roses. If you have 50 good days in a year, you're going to be a, a millionaire. So most days are not good. Every single day, there's something, there's an issue, a problem and everything else. So. You know, I've been listening to you for a while at Clubhouse and you're, you're making significant moves. I heard you say one time you have, you know, 50, 60 different businesses, right? So let me ask you a question. I mean, how do you, how do, most people can't run one business. So how are you running 60 something businesses? Are you delegating it or are you, I mean, how do you, how do you yeah, run those first, businesses? Well, you start with one. I, I made my first million at 24 in real estate. I made my second at 25. My 10 million was 28. And then, you know, I, I started, once I dominated one thing, then I started hedging and diversifying. I started a radio show. I got asked to be on a radio show that then became internationally syndicated, self-syndicated. Then I said, I started being a speaker. People start sending me deals. They start listening to my show. I started doing events. And then I started, okay, here's a business opportunity. Here's another one. I met successful people. I started having money, more money. And I started hedging and diversifying. And you uh, accumulate a massive database. Like the call, like I'm looking at a guy who I just ironically met on Clubhouse. Uh, as a hot sauce company. I tried it. I actually really liked it. So, I mean, it's very easy for me to take my product and maybe I even put my face in the hot sauce and then send it to everybody because it was a really good hot sauce. So like once you have the database, right, first of all, you need to build it and then you need to sell it, create the audience, right? Create the database. Anything Elon Musk starts now, it'll be branded because <laughs> he's got the audience, right? whether it's a tequila, a flamethrower or shorts. Once you have the audience, you have that people need to build a community and then sell it. But people are trying to sell to no community, which makes their job even harder. Right. So JT, I didn't even know who you were six weeks ago. And now I feel like I know you. I mean, listen, everyone's figuring you out. I, I think I have a really good understanding of who you are. But let's say at six weeks ago, you're introduced to this thing called Clubhouse. How much has that significantly impacted your business? I mean, I, what has Clubhouse done for you? It's this, you know, it's this great thing, but what has it really done for you? Has it really done anything? Is it not? In my industry, I was very well known. But mainstream like, cause everyone was clips of Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. And then we all collided on this app. So now, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. everyone kind of knows me now they know who I am. Right. And the people that were idolizing realized that they're, they kind of got no game. <laughs> so I was in Bellator, right? And I was the top fighter there. Nobody knows about Bellator, right? They know <laughs> it, but they don't know it, right? right. And then all of a sudden now, I'm in the UFC and people are like, whoa, who is this guy? Right. 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 And, like, and that's how I would compare myself now. Now I'm in the UFC. Everyone's gunning for me. Right. So that that so that's how I would describe that as well. And so I would say like below the radar, which, by the way, being above the radar is not always great, as I no. personally experience. I'm sure. I'm well. sure it's not because you get, you get you know, it's lonely at the top. Right. And you get darts thrown at you because nobody wants to stay up there for a long time. And I, I've, I seen that that I've seen that happen. I've seen I always like under the radar. I was known famous in my industry, mm -hmm. but not mainstream. Now I'm becoming mainstream, which now you're getting a lot more pot shots. You love like I don't like negative attention. I've never right. liked negative stuff. I really don't. That's one thing. And I hate it, especially when it's not true. And so you have to sort of kind of deal with that as well. And my personality will deal. Like, unfortunately, my personality will attract that. So you're attracting 
more heat than yeah. you go. But I mean, I, what I'm about to hit a hundred thousand followers in you know, six weeks and I was off for a week and that's been a rapid rise. And that's to, to the extent of who I am and why people like me, but I'm a different person. I, I keep saying there's three JTs. There's JT in business, which is extremely hard, tough, mm -hmm. no BS. There's JT like on stage, fun entertainment, right. you know, like just get it out. And there's JT personal, like I'm a completely different person. I'm like kind of an introvert. I'd rather stay at home. Not anymore though. Like last thing I would want to do is stay at home. Stay home. You know, I believe whatever's in your DNA, it's who you are, right? You can't change who you are. You could change how you respond to it. You're going to change how you think, but you can't change the person who you are. Has that shifted your thinking or your approach towards people? Because I, when I think, before you answer that, so you have that hard, medium, soft approach, right? It should be hard. It should be tough love. Right. But we're in this culture of the cancel culture. People are sensitive. Uh, how has that example. situation affected you? So they try to cancel me because of who I was and how hard it was. I never said anything wrong that people right. didn't believe. Me. Right. But and then he got like, oh, you're racist, you're sexist, but nobody can give me an example. And, right. and once people put that perception. Right. So I came back the first week after that. Right. And I did it very soft and I would attract 200 people, 250 people tops. Right. I don't think I crossed 50. Right. Right. Now I, remember, I said, yeah. you know, I need to go back. And last night I blew up and the servers, people couldn't get in the room and we're capped at 1900 because I was trying to get in. The servers were crashing now much more mindful, of course. But when you're on a platform like that, that is non scripted, that you're going four or five hours in a row, you can yeah. take that one small thing and could be taken out of context that creates other rooms and other drama. That's right. the problem. Like you do an hour show, you can keep it somewhat scripted. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kind of have no idea. No you know, I mean, your patience goes down, you say something yeah. and then it just, that's the danger of, of, because there's no controlled element. You're basically freestyling for two to five hours in a row. Your, your mental acuity is not there and you say right. something, yeah. but unfortunately, yeah. sorry, doesn't cut it there because know. you know, they want you canceled. So unfortunately. So uh, part of the show where I asked the three questions, so I, I asked David Meltzer, I asked Jarek Robbins, Tony Robbins, you know, I've asked all these you know, featured speakers and, and uh, entrepreneurs. So help me understand your passion, what's your purpose and tell me what your why is. So let's, let's get to that. What's your passion, JT? You know, my passion is, is constantly improving every day. My definition of success is am I a better person today than I was yesterday? Right. Well, I'll be a better person tomorrow. I need to improve. I suffer from ADD. I get Here. bored very easily. <laughs> Even now I have so much money. Um, yeah. And then you're like wondering like, what's next? What should I do? And I've been struggling between, do I just focus on one thing? Kind of like yeah. Elon, Elon yeah. focuses on two things, right? right he can. And just go all in on that. Or do I do kind of what I do? I have all these companies and then I'm like on a boat and oh my God, there's fishes there. Boom, get right. throw them at, bring them out. And then I got all these fishes and I'm like, all right, you take care of it, which right. is very much like a Richard Branson mm -hmm. from a lifestyle perspective, much more fun to just go where the fish is and kind of go there. Building an empire, maybe if I had just focus on one thing, mm. I'd be even more successful. And I'm extremely successful. No, and I, so, and I, I know you. So, so that's your passion. So your, your passion is you're, you're like a forever student, which is a good thing. So what do you think your purpose is? I always live life like if it all ended now, would I be happy with what I've accomplished, right? right? And that's why I was working. I was on the road 324 days, 54 countries a year sometimes. Uh, we had clients in 104. I saw the world. I experienced, I mean, you know, think about it. You're nobody from Canada. You stutter, you, you, you come into America and, you know, next thing you know, I'm doing my own event in Kuwait, in Bahrain, in mm. Israel, you know, in Oman, in Turkey, you know, China, mm. uh, Taiwan, like India, Sri Lanka, like to me is one of my great accomplishments. I've gone another place in the world where no one knew me and created a brand in those countries as well. Um, that to me has that level of significance and legacy. You think about fulfillment that, that kind of leads to my, my why. So your why is I want to be fulfilled. I want to have joy, but I want someone to leave a legacy. I mean, I don't know if you're married, you have kids, but when you think about it in terms of as you get older and you cross certain boundaries or certain plateaus in your life, I know I have, I have four children. Mine is my legacy. So when I think in terms of legacy, I think, okay, what, what do I want to be known for? What do I have left to accomplish? I asked Tony Robbins, I said, Tony, what do you really want? To accomplish in your life when when you get when I call when you graduate to go upstairs and he goes I want to feed a billion people so what what do you have left to accomplish I mean you have the money you have the success you have the attention you have the joy you have fulfillment what else are you looking to like what's your ultimate accomplishment goal that you want to reach you know it's it's ever since evolving okay here's the thing I mean if I'd ask you like a, two weeks ago would I be on your show the answer is probably no because I didn't know you and I get a lot of requests right, right. um so I, here's the thing too. That's why I don't believe in five-year plans. Five years from now, I don't know what the world's going to look like. I don't know what's going to happen. I think I control what happens in one year, mm -hmm. but the pandemic is a perfect story. You don't know what life throws at you. I never take my foot off the accelerator mm -hmm. and I punch it through. My biggest regret is as I became, I, when I was not successful, I said yes to everything and that's how I grew. 
as I became very successful, I stopped saying yes. And I started saying no a lot more. No to people, no to opportunities. That's my biggest regret. This pandemic has made me realize that there, I needed to say yes more again. So I right. think it's helped me realign. So now I think I'm much more uh, regrounded, maybe perhaps. By the way, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate the you know the time here on the show. One of the things I, I always like to ask my guests, I like to ask those, I call them jaw dropping, soul piercing, penetrating questions. And they're, they're pretty simple. I get them not only from other other speakers and other interviewers, but I, I always like to ask, uh, you know, next couple of questions is what's, you know, what, what's the biggest lie you've ever been told in life? What's the biggest lie that you realize this was a lie? You might've been told this that you don't belong, that you're not good enough, that you're not going to be successful. Right. Right. If you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, you're going to make it yeah. pain is temporary quitting lasts forever. Right. Um, you know, I was told I wasn't good enough and everybody is good enough. It's not easy. You got to fight. You got to, claw inch by inch but uh when someone tells you that you can't do it that just means that they can so so you're speaking to a 35 year old or a 55 year old right 35 year olds just yeah. getting started in their industry 55 year olds kind of turning the page Here, here's a question i think I, here's the thing. my coach george ross is 93 years old so wow. i think age is just a number just a number. so and you should this can be so i, I don't care if you're 80 i don't care right. if you're 20. Uh, to me it's all the same because we all different starts i mean everyone wished they would have started earlier yeah. Um, so now that to me, that's kind of like the point, you know, so, just, so the advice you give to a 35 year old will be the same you give to a 55 year old, brand new entrepreneur, right? Just getting into this business. I know everyone's chasing the shiny object and everybody's it's, talking. It's, totally it's, it's, risk averse, so it's also risk versus reward. Not everyone is born to be an entrepreneur. Not everyone has the ability to, to make it not, you know what I mean? I think people quit too soon. I think people have become soft. Right. Um, and you know, I think you need the fire and, and if you got the fire, then you'll always succeed. Couple more questions, JT, we're almost done with the interview. So I always, I, I, I think I stole this from Gary V, sort of like the underrated, overrated. So I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. Uh, what do you think of Bitcoin? Underrated, overrated, properly rated? Uh, I think, uh, we're like Gary V now. Um, I just have to ask the question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, last time uh, I checked, that was uh, Anthony. I hope I'm seeing that. <laughs> uh, I, th I would say Bitcoin has been underrated. I think everyone was talking bad about it. No, right. it's the hero, it's just like anything. You're a hero yeah. one day and, and the next day you're a bad, you're a bad guy. Being an entrepreneur, underrated, overrated, properly rated. Uh, I think entrepreneur is overrated. I think people think it's too easy. They think it's cool. I think it's the greatest thing in the world. But I think people need to be getting realistic expectations. If you can leave, like you leave a piece of advice for my audience, um, of you know the 40, 50,000 that listen, listen to my show. If you could leave a piece of advice, what's one piece of advice you'd give them that you walk away from today's show? Um, here's the thing too: success is not a matter of chance. It's a matter of choice. Life does not give us what we want. Life gives us what we deserve. Um, and, um, you know, you never lose a life until you quit. So you just go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Anthony Conklin podcast with uh, JT Fox. JT, where can people find you to track you down? By the way, JT is giving away free coaching. If, if I could take the liberty and share that JT is giving some free coaching to everybody who gets a chance to get into his DM. How can people find you? Yeah, they go to my Instagram. There's a link or you want to do business with me. You want to partner with me. Uh, you go to my Instagram. There's a link there. Uh, also too, I mean, I used to sell one program for $5,000. If you go to millionaireflix.com, you pretty much get uh, 7,000 hours of everything I've ever done. Plus I've recorded every coaching sessions from broke to where I am. So you can actually see the advice I've gotten and how stuff like that. You should get that too. It's only $50 and then you'll get a whole insight, um, especially on how I sell and how I succeed. So uh, everything I've ever done, I've documented and I've shared. And I'm the only one in the world who's ever shared his coaching sessions with it and still do. Every time I get coached, like I'm, I'm getting coached by uh, my coach in the next couple of days where I'm talking about the next phase of my life and what I'm going through. And I'm very, very transparency. And I think that's one thing about me. If it's good enough for me, it's good enough for my clients. So they can check that out at millionaireflix.com. Send me a DM also. And if you want some free coaching, I end my day and I give three to five one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. So just go there and my Instagram, JT Fox official. And you know, um, if I could change, it takes one person, one deal, one opportunity to change your life and your business forever. You got two people here on this podcast. So might as well join the third wheel. Absolutely. Well, my 50 bucks will be well spent at this podcast. So I just want to say thank you so much, JT. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you for spending your time. This has been the Anthony Conklin Podcast. We help entrepreneurs connect their passion, purpose, and why. If you're struggling with sales, confidence, and strategy, let's have a conversation either with me or with JT. Have yourself a great day. Don't forget to live every day with passion. Until next time, we'll see you real soon.
crazy.